All right, hey everybody, Tom Mahoney here presenting. Uh, we're going to talk about the F-22 Raptor today. Uh, it's an awesome aircraft, and uh, so yeah, let's jump into it. All right, so what we have today for our content, we've got an introduction. We're going to talk about the history of the F-22. I'm going to talk about my research summary, analysis, and recommendations, and then I'll have a conclusion for you, and then we can uh, look at the reference slide. All right, so first of all, just to kind of introduce the F-22, the F-22 is a stealth fighter, uh, stealth air-to-air -air combat fighter. It was designed and built by Lockheed Martin um, with assistance from Boeing and Pratt & Whitney who produced the engines. There are 187 of these aircraft delivered to the United States Air Force, which is the F-22's only customer. And that's partially because export of the F-22 um, is prohibited due to all the stealth technology that makes up the F-22. So we'll talk a little bit about the history. F-22 was developed in the 1970s. That's when the idea first originated. It didn't make its first flight until 1997, so there was quite a bit that happened between uh, those two dates. Originally, it was imagined as an air-to-ground combat aircraft, but eventually they moved to a air-to-air -air combat aircraft because of the concern of the Soviet Union and the different aircraft that they had as well. Uh, funding for the F-22 almost uh, went away. In fact, the F-22 almost never became anything. The des before they even made a design, they canceled the funding, but eventually the funding was restored. And then this, uh, this up here is the F-23, YF-23, which was Northrop's uh, competition for the F-22, and this is the F-22 um, prototype. This was the first one. So the F-22 won the contract over the YF-23. All right, so now we're going to move into my research summary of the F-22. And first, I want to talk about the wings. So as you can see here, the F-22 has um, clipped delta wings. So you can see the delta shape and then kind of clipped at the end right there. The wingspan is 44 and a half feet, um, and the area of the wing is 840 square feet. Uh, the wing loading for the F-22 is 99 pounds per square foot, which is less than the F-15 and the F-16, which is very impressive. The wing also includes uh, leading edge devices, it includes flaperons and ailerons as well. As you can see, the wings are swept back. Uh, the angle on the leading edge is 42 degrees. And uh, yes, so moving on to stealth. So one of the unique features that the F-22 has is, as you might be able to make out here, it's got this sawtooth cutout shape around several of the different openings on the aircraft. So right by the nozzles and the um, landing gear doors, there's the sawtooth pattern. And this is to increase stealth without compromising on performance. The trailing edge of the wing here is, uh, the flaps down, but the trailing edge is right near the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer. Uh, and this, uh, the purpose of this is to uh, reduce the radar signature of the F-22. Most of the weapons of the F-22 are carried internally. In fact, they can all be carried. They can all be carried internally. You can see here there are some rockets mounted to this F-22. Uh, so this F-22 maybe is flying a ground support mission where they're not as concerned with stealth and they're just trying to carry more weapons. But these missiles can be loaded internally into these bays as well. So probably the most interesting thing I discovered about the F-22 is that the entire surface of it is actually curved. There's no right angles on the F-22. The purpose of this is to, uh, when a radar hits the F-22, uh, the curved surfaces bounce the radar signatures in different directions so that there's no return on the radar, or at least it minimizes the radar return. So I thought that was really interesting. So moving into the power, uh, there are two Pratt & Whitney engines that power the F-22. Here we can see it um, with the afterburners activated. Each engine provides 35,000 pounds of thrust, which is incredible. And the F-22 has the ability to supercruise at 1.5 Mach. What supercruise is, is uh, the ability to cruise, or the, the ability to fly past the speed of sound without using afterburners. Because afterburners, you're basically just dumping fuel into the, um, the uh, aft part of the engine, and it's not efficient whatsoever. So the ability to supercruise means that it has uh, quite uh, increased efficiency over other aircraft that are flying past the speed of sound. Um, it also has thrust vectoring, which we're going to get into here in a little bit, but these nozzles can move up and down 20 degrees in each direction, which aids quite a bit in maneuverability. All right, so we're going to talk about my analysis of the F-22. So as I mentioned just 
in the last slide, um, the thrust vectoring in the F-22, that really enables it to perform much better than most other aircraft. So uh, I have this one graph up here, and it's kind of showing the altitudes and the speeds at which the different aircraft can perform a 5G maneuver. So the F-22 at altitudes of over 60,000 feet can pull a 5G maneuver. If we compare it to the F-15, the F-15 can only do it a 5G maneuver at about 35,000 feet and not past the speed of sound. And then coming down to the F-35, um, it can't even get up to 30,000 feet and pull a 5G maneuver. So it's just, it's not the same whatsoever. Uh, the reason for this is the thrust vectoring of the F-22. At high altitudes, it's, it's able to use those vectoring nozzles to aid in performance, whereas um, the other aircraft are relying mostly on control surfaces at that point. So um, those obviously are going to decrease with uh, inefficiency at higher altitudes, but the F-22 can vector its nozzles and uh, that aids it in performance quite a bit. Um, the biggest benefit of this is that in air-to-air -air combat situations, being able to perform better at higher altitudes means the F-22 can really have the high ground in any sort of combat situation. And then the angle of attack with the F-22 is essentially unlimited thanks to the thrust vectoring. And the F-22 also um, has avionics that will prevent the pilot from overstressing. With all that power, that's definitely something to worry about. So I have a video that shows the thrust vectoring nozzles here. So we'll take a quick look at this after an advertisement. nozzles going up uh, right there, so that's their peak right there, that's the max they can go up. Um, obviously, when they're flying, they can move these up or down, as you'll see. They move in sync with the horizontal stabilizers, as you can see right there, up and down. Alright, so recommendations. Um, Obviously, the F-22 is amazing, and I have no recommendations for the F-22 or for Lockheed Martin, uh, but I do have recommendations for how we should handle the F-22. Um, a lot of orders of the F-22 were canceled because of rising costs for the F-22. So some people have said that we should reopen the production line in order to, uh, in order to make more of them, but this is really kind of cost inhibitive and it's probably not going to happen. One thing that some people have suggested is that we allow one of our close allies to purchase the F-22, like Great Britain or Japan. Uh, but I really don't see this as realistic for a multiple of reasons. But my suggestion is to take the money that we would spend on new F-22s and really focus that on future technology and not worry about what we have made, but worry about what we're gonna need in the future. So my conclusion with the F-22, the F-22 is exceptional. I mean, it is an incredible aircraft. It's probably the most impressive aircraft that we have flying today. The balance between stealth and performance, they got it just right. Lockheed Martin nailed it. Uh, and then in a perfect world, we would have more of these F-22s serving today in the Air Force. Uh, but instead, since we don't, uh, we should definitely be focusing on what comes after the F-22, uh, just so that we can stay ahead of Russia or China or whoever else we need to, uh, to worry about. So uh, thanks for watching, I appreciate it, and uh, talk to you guys later.